happened two days ago, you realize how important it is to win this fight. And we will win this fight. While we're traveling in on uh, Karen Travers as she jets around uh, the globe, where in the world is Karen Travers? We find her in Brussels this morning. Good morning, Karen Travers. Good morning. Another city, another day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how, let's back up a day. How did, uh, how did the trip finish up in uh, Rome? The president was clearly so taken by Pope Francis. He actually said this very Donald Trump-esque line. He said he is something. And he said it was an honor to meet with him. He called it a great and fantastic meeting. The Vatican readout was a little more neutral, said it was a cordial meeting. But we also know that Pope Francis really made a big push for the president to not uh, pull out the United States from the Paris Climate Change Agreement. He also handed him some writings that the Pope has done on the environment, making a strong case for action on climate change. The president said he will read them, and he promised to consider that request. All right, now on to Brussels. What's the day like today? The president started his day with meetings with European Union leaders and now is meeting and having lunch with the newly elected French president, Macron. Uh, of course, he did not back him in the uh, very heated, tense election a couple weeks ago in France, but he said a few moments ago in a quick photo op that it was a very impressive, tremendous victory. He said all over the world they're talking about it. Uh, he's not taking any questions so far. Uh, we've, there have been two opportunities to shout questions at the president about this tension right now between the British intelligence services and the American intelligence services. This is shaping up to be a storyline that could overshadow whatever the agenda the president is trying to push today. The British officials are saying they are no longer sharing intelligence on the Manchester attack because of the leaks that are coming from the American side to American media. They're very frustrated about this, and the prime minister says she is going to bring this up with the president when she meets with him on the sidelines here at NATO. Karen Travers, we're hearing that the British officials are saying that they are no longer going to mm -hmm. exchange information with with American officials on the intelligence because of this. And it certainly is going to make it a lot harder than for U.S. officials to cooperate and help the Brits as they do this investigation. Remember, in the moments after the attack, the president reached out to Theresa May and pledged the full support of the United States. Uh, that's now quite complicated by this uh the way these information has been coming out in the American media. The Brits are really, really frustrated. Also uh, with this, uh, Donald Trump making the push, saying the things about NATO, wanting each member nation to pay their own mm -hmm. fare. And so he's had a somewhat uh, rough start with the other NATO nations. How much is, is that playing over there? The president has certainly walked back from some of the more charged rhetoric from the campaign trail when he declared that NATO was obsolete and suggested that the United States would in back countries uh, that didn't meet their financial commitments as part of their membership obligations. He has walked back the obsolete line. He said, no, no, NATO, I said that it was obsolete. It's no longer obsolete presumably because he started talking about it. But the financial message is still going to be a core part of what he says today to NATO members. He is really making this push that if the United States is spending the required amount of GDP on defense, all these other countries have to do it too. And this is actually something that there's bipartisan support for back in Washington. Everybody needs to pay their fair share. Uh, also, is President Obama stepping on President Trump's toes by being over in Europe at this same time? Kind of interesting timing, isn't it? You have former President Obama uh, meeting with German Chancellor Merkel at a conference in Berlin. And then later today, Merkel will be meeting with President Trump. Uh, kind of an interesting dynamic. We know how close she and the former president are, were, when he was in office, and how the relationship with President Trump was a bit more strained, but something that they say they're working on. So they say this conference was scheduled. It wasn't uh, step. They didn't do it on purpose uh, to try and step on the president, but I don't know. Is Europe big enough for both of them right now? <laughs> Karen Travers with ABC News traveling with the president. Karen, great job as always. Have a good day. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks. You All too. Right. Karen Travers here with ABC News. Now, one final note about uh, Rome. Sean Spicer is a devout Catholic. Okay. And he was not able to meet the Pope. I feel really bad for him, but so does so many of the reporters. Um, Melania, Rex Tillerson, H.R. McMaster, Hope Hicks, Trump Communications Advisor, a couple of bodyguards, Ivanka, Jared, all met with the Pope. Sean Spicer, a devout Catholic, did not. Listen to this. Mm. 
um, reporters, uh, Glenn Thrush, the famed New York Times re- reporter who gets so beat up by Sean Spicer, said uh, the planners of the trip couldn't or wouldn't get Sean Spicer into the Vatican speaks to the small mindedness and small mindedness I find incredibly depressing. That's what he tweeted mm. out. Uh, New York Times White House correspondent Maggie Haberman says this seems needlessly harsh. Why else is Spicer likely to meet the Pope and it mattered to him? Trump is a cruel boss. New Republic editor Jeet Heater, who wrote the president, didn't let Sean Spicer meet the Pope out of sheer meanness. Politico magazine editor-in-chief said Spicer seems uh, seems uh, to leaving Spicer out seems like a slight. Um, Aaron Burnett says, by all accounts, this would have been the highlight of his life. Sean that Spicer is, not able to meet the the Pope. That is, regardless of how you feel about him and those reporters, you right. know, yeah. regardless of how they felt, because I know they've been on the front lines and yeah. Yeah. and he's, you know, been harsh maybe yeah, yeah, to yeah, yeah. some of them. But yeah. the fact that oh, breaks your heart. That o- is only because I have. He's right there. I have met Catholics who have met the Pope and the reverence that they talk about meeting mm-hmm. the Pope. Um, you know, you just you get excited hearing their story. Yes. And so as a devout Catholic, I feel really bad for Sean Spicer, yeah. a devout Catholic who didn't meet the Pope. I just sort of, oh, I man. mean, he's literally right there. Right. And he's watching from the sidelines. Right. You're the White House communications director. Your boss who is there. Who has had the most difficult right. job. Right. Oh, it just makes you feel terrible for the guy. I feel bad for him, too. 658, Big Five.